Hello, guys. Oh, forget about that big thing. It's me again, and it's been a very long time, and I'm glad to be back. And I have something to show you. Right behind me is my universal shift register design. You can shift bits left and right, and you can also um, essentially reset it as well. So it's really good. The obvious reasons for building a shift register like this one would be to do multiplication and division problems in binary. And I guess I kind of spoiled my future plans, so this is obviously a part I've been developing with some other stuff. And it's gonna it's gonna be great. So let's just go ahead and just see how it functions and then I'm even going to show you how to build this as well. So let's go and put in a random binary number that I will not know. Because I believe the number, 16 bits is like over 65,000 to put that in perspective. So we have our bits in here. And I have bit shift left and bit shift right. So if I click this, you'll notice that the bits do indeed shift left. And if they keep going, they will actually leave the section. Now, what you can do is you can actually make it so you can rotate the bits around, but I'm not gonna do that right now. There's no point. I'll show you how to do it when we build the machine. But as you can see, I'm clicking shift right, shifts the bits right, click shift left, shift some left, and we're gonna go ahead and just shift them out just to prove my point with that. You won't, you won't recover your bits once they're out of the system, obviously. So yeah, it works, it works okay, and it resets fast. There you go. And most importantly, look how tiny it is. This is 16 bits. Usually these things are a tiny bit larger, and it doesn't use lock repeaters, so yeah, it's not that finicky. All right, so let's get into the logic of the design. So obviously a shift register works off of something called a D flip-flop. Um, right here, I just have an RS neural latch, which is usually a part of a D flip-flop in some D flip-flop designs. However, this isn't exactly a D flip-flop. As a matter of fact, all this does is mimic what a D flip-flop does. And the reason why I have it mimic that is because what I'm doing instead is I'm unlocking these comparators, which allows certain of these bits to be um, open, essentially. So whenever I unlock these comparators, when there's a bit in there, there's a chance for it to obviously be triggered by this line and they'll reset to zero. And the bits that are... Um, that... The bits that are zeros essentially gain a signal from the bits that aren't a zero and will actually not move, well, you know, they'll, they'll toggle. Here's what happens. Whenever you power a dropper like this with a comparator, it's actually going to suck the item from here and put it into here due to block update order, which is kind of convenient because I, I can really t uh, make this thing very tight, so to say. All right, for the reset line, it's quite simple. I just have a long line of repeaters facing into resin torches that go into these, which is the input section. These are both inputs. However, one has to be a reset, and one has to be an input. As you can see, there's just double inverted torches, and I like how clean it is. All right, also, yeah, that's... We have these, solid state. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, this is completely solid state, no moving parts. Um, yeah, these are solid state um, monostable circuits which give a one pulse out. So what happens is this line first triggers which opens those comparators and then the next line triggers which um, sets some values to zero and sets some values to one. So that's how it shifts quote unquote, when it's really just shifting this to zero and then sh making that a one and, and vice versa. Okay, so 
With that said and done, we're going to go ahead and build this now. So it's, all you got to do is find a nice open spot in your world. And I'm going to use the set block command to set a block to get started. The, on this server, I do have world edit. So keep that in mind. And we're going to first start with our droppers. So what you're going to do is you're going to face two droppers into each other like so. And then you're going to get an item like this grass block, for example. It cannot be non-stack items like this wooden axe. It has to be stackable items. Well, yeah. So just put like a cobblestone or whatever in that dropper. And that's obviously our dropper that's going to toggle. Uh, we'll see what else I can get for blocks. I think I would try out some of these. These are really nice colors. All right, so... You want to take your blocks out like so, and you're going to put orange, not orange blocks, just solid blocks. And the reason why is because we need a comparator to come out of it. <laughs> that looks so good. Alright, and we want a comparator facing out of it, and then also in. And that's the shift left and right function. Right there. And we're going to also want our redstone right here and make sure that it goes up like this mind you i'm building one slice which is going to be very useful because i can just show you how to use world edit but yeah so far we have this this is obviously the line that works with this comparator make sure these comparators in the center are on subtract mode or else we can't toggle them properly. So go ahead and do that. And we're going to put redstone dust here. And now we're going to get this block out. I'm using different colors to label different parts of the circuit. For this part of the circuit, we want to use our, our redstone torch like this. And our blocks will just kind of look like this. You want to go up a block higher than that on purpose and you're gonna put redstone dust on that and this is your output and your input will come from below as a matter of fact before we continue we want to go ahead and use a block that'll help us find the input section and I broke those my apologies okay so far so good all right that's good so yeah got our output and now for input lines. So for the input, it's quite simple. We're just going to have a resin torch facing in that way. I'm going to get a different block, I say. Let's try some of this lime green concrete. I'm using the OCD texture pack that actually just came out not long ago. It's a very nice texture pack. So I really, yeah, it's just something to appreciate, I say. Um, I'm going to have to keep it back by one because I like to have my my output level with the... Or I like my input level with the output so they're on the same height. It's just a lot more cleaner that way for wiring. So we've got our input, we've got our output. I'll label that in green as well. And yes, we got our shifting um, wires in. So from this point... I think it's best just to do the copy paste. So to do that, we're gonna select this corner where our input is in. Now for those who don't have copy and paste, you can also use structure blocks. I might show that as well, but first I'm gonna go ahead and show off how to use this. All right. So you're gonna put blocks on two of the main corners of your build, the very bottom corner and the very top corner on the other side. You right click and left click the individual uh, spots and then you type slash slash stack and you stack as many as you want and voila it stacks. Alright so those without world edit do the slash give command and give yourself a structure block so it's going to be your at a and then you can type structure kind of and tab and now you've got the structure block. What I like to do um, is I just like to put in a random coordinate, but if you're very precise, I'll show you what you want to do. 
when you're looking at your x, y, and z on the near top left, you want to make sure you're heading in the positive coordinates like this. So you see how my z coordinates going up and then you see how my x is going up. Uh, that's the way the structure block will basically build its box around. So you want to basically go away from those positive coordinates. So go to the least positive coordinate of your build and then you could check just by moving like that. All right, so now that we know where exactly our box will be, go ahead and place your structure block and make sure you get your X coordinate right. And we're just testing random sizes. Give your thing a name. That's 15. And go ahead and just save it. And there you go, see, it does work. Now you don't have to be too specific about the size. You just have to make sure the box gets around the whole build. And yep, you can just save it quite easily. There you go. And that's basically my structure. So we've, we just save it, you change it to load. And when you've got that, do control middle click for Windows and then command middle click for Macs. So now we go, oh, okay. Now we have to just do some shift clicking repeat. And as you can see, you can do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do 16 bits like I did earlier. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So now we have sixteen. Uh, or maybe Morris check again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. We are good. So here's the fun part about structure blocks. Once you have all of them laid exactly two blocks apart, you just do this. Wee. <laughs> and there you go. So that's how you do it without world edit. And we can make sure that it copy the items and it has. So that's very good. So, so now we've got our structure built, as you can see. So we've got our reset line uh, down. Our reset line is actually not yet to be built. We'll build that in a second. I should have uh, built that. But yeah, as you can see, all the redstone lines look very nice. You've got your redstone below. And now you can just go ahead and remove these so yeah, now you know how to use your structure blocks if you didn't have world edit. Okay. Right, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and focus on getting our reset line built. The reset line's gonna be pretty easy because all we have to do is build um, an L shape like this to begin with and you're gonna put resin torches right there. I'm going to just build one section so we can copy it. Alright, so you're going to go ahead and just put another one there and this will invert it. And now the signal is being sent up and it's going to go into this dropper here as you can tell. If I break this block, there's a dropper there. So, yes. That's basically the reset section almost complete. All you really want to do now is for tie up, um, copy tile ability, we're just going to do that. And we're going to do the good old world edit selection. So that corner and the opposite top. So that one, bot <clears throat> bottom cord. And then we'll stack it 15 since we already have one. And if we do minus A, it negates air, which is very useful for stacking very complex components as you probably would know. So now that you've copied it or built it manually, um, just make sure you don't have glass in between each. That was my bad. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna count eight from this point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna mark this off with a block because this right here is actually our center point. So 
just do that. And you're going to have to replace these uh, very end corners, and that should just reach. And now we just go ahead and take this up, like so. And that there's our reset line. So you can have program memory to control that, as you know. There, or, yeah. I don't know what use you're going to use this for, but I hope you use it for something useful. If you ever decide to use it. Okay, something we did forget to do is put in the repeaters here for our output because we have to avoid that one redstone dust there. But that's no big deal because you needed to bust out anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah, no problems there. And there you go. So now you can uh, bust out and, you know, take this data into your ALU or just into multiple inputs or whatever. So, you know, there's you've got your uses. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we need to focus on this top section here. This is quite an important section to be, be focusing on. It's our shift section. So you're gonna go and align yourself up with this redstone torch here, and we're gonna go ahead and build a structure again. And I'm gonna use the glass. If you don't have glass and you're in a lower version, Go ahead and just use top slabs because they work the exact same way. All right. All right. We're first going to go ahead and place two repeaters on two redstone tick delays. Make sure to break the metal dust there. And from here, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a thing to activate that. And the thing that I'm specifying is just. <laughs> redstone torch of course so if we're fortunate it's gonna reach all the way to the end and if you're really not sure just pop your F3 menu up and look to your right and it's like the middle right and you'll see it says power when you're looking at the redstone and it goes up so it's five four three two and we and we technically know that it's on that way so we know it's on and we know the signal's reaching. This one, however, is not reaching. And I don't like that. I want to see what we can do about that. Um, I probably did something slightly different with this, didn't I? Here, let's find out. Because I feel like I... Oh, that's right, this is useless. I'm sorry. I did do something useless there. Um, and is it like that on the other side? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Nope, never mind. There was a useless part. So when it goes out here... Yeah, th these do nothing. This is this was our title ability thing. But we can just do that. And that. And this. Now, on the other side, however, this is important to keep. There's one part that'll be important to keep. Um, right now, it's set up properly here, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Thankfully, nothing's broken. <laughs> that would have been very, 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 very disastrous. I'm going to try to remove as much redstone dust as I can. And that, that, that happens usually when you use structure blocks or world edit, so keep that in mind. Okay, so now we know that's hooked up properly, and we're going to go ahead and build our next part. Which will be the monostable circuit. However, I want to build it in a way where it's actually going to be very good for what I need. So, um, I find that this is the a very nice monostable circuit design. It's just really easy to wire up. So there's one monostable, and it does what we want it to do. It keeps us unpowered for now. And what's going to happen is it'll run the signal in and back that way, and it won't interfere with the monostable circuit. So we're fine. And with that in mind, we've got to build the second one. And the second one's literally just a mirror of what we currently have. And I... I appreciate it for that reason. So, we literally just do the exact same thing. 
And we want to put our glass back again and just get our our redstone repeaters in again. So go ahead and get those redstone repeaters in. Make sure that they connect. And they're powering these droppers on purpose. As you know. And um, this is a preference. You could probably have both of these mod stables on the same exact line or whatever. But I like to keep mine on separate lines. So that's why I'm putting this one over here. Alright. And... I believe that does it, actually. You know what? We're pretty much done. Yes. So, um, with that, essentially, we did forget one thing. For the left shift to work properly, we actually need to put our repeater there. Or, yeah, it's a very, it's, it's a, such a specific thing, I know, but... It has to be done. Uh, or else it just doesn't work. So there we go. Yeah, so that'll just take the power from there and wire it back in. And all should be well, I hope. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got that covered. I'm just going to go click the reset line for now. And it resets any bits that were in there. And I want to select these three for now just to test it. Alright, so hopefully this is the right shift if I'm... Or is it left? Left shift. So there you go. It's, it's shifting left. Let's put some redstone lamps to complete this build. I think that would make it look good. So if we put redstone lamps here, we can see the inputs a little bit easier. And if we just click on our button, there you go. And if we go from that side, shifts backwards and goes back. All right, so let's just shift those bits all the way across. I think it's also spam proof for the most part, so. But I don't think you're going to spam it so fast, so it's not even a big deal. Alright, and then we'll just make sure that works fine. Yes. Alright, that'll be it, fellas. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. And I'll know that you this actually helped you. And if you dislike, um, you can comment why you didn't like it. And I'll see what I can do from there to make things better in the future. And... If you feel like seeing more interesting redstone builds, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll be sure to output more content because now I'm going to focus my redstone more about this kind of tech. So you'll be sure to see more of it. Alright, take care and goodbye.